So welcome to my MBS plugin presentation. My name is Christian Schmitz. I'm from Germany and I'm happy to show you what's new in the MBS plugins. So MBS plugins exist now for 19 years. That's a lot of time. We got a lot of feature requests over the years. I added nearly everything. <laughs> So we got 40 plugins, that's after we, we um, merged a few last year, but still a lot. Internally it's 485 plugin parts, those are combined to the plugin archives and depending on what you're using, you only get the parts needed for your application added to your application, so application doesn't get as huge as all the plugins. The documentation shows you 64,000 items. This includes 2,500 classes, a lot of methods, properties, constants. And we have over 2,000 example projects. So if you check out 40 a day, maybe a year. <laughs> okay, I don't want to tell you everything that would be taking too much time but maybe you are interested to learn what's new since the last conference so we got classes for large numbers sometimes you may need a large number to calculate something so we have large number mbs class and that's an integer with 4000 bits of size so you can calculate, for example, prime numbers, or you can calculate how much money you have on your bank account. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it does do negative numbers, yes. Uh, you can do various algorithms, like uh, the greatest common divider, if you want. And if you need a floating point number, we have big number MBS which is a 320-bit floating point number. This is big enough to give you 100 di digits of precision before the dot, uh, much more than, than a normal double. And some people do have a need for that, for some scientific calculation. Next, we have continuity camera. That's a new feature in Macos Mojave and iOS 12. So you can use your iOS device to take pictures for your Mac. Both devices need to be on the same network or same Bluetooth range or have the, and, and of course has the same iCloud account because this is handled over iCloud. You can show the pop-up menu to, for the user to decide which device to take either a picture or a document. A picture is just a picture, but a document is a PDF with several pages of uh, pictures. And while the picture is taken, you will see um, a little sheet showing on your application window, telling the user to take the picture. This is how it looks like on the iPhone. So I took a few screenshots. So you have a document on your desk. desk. You um, select the document, there's a yellow frame showing where the document is recognized. Then it's uh, rectified when you take the picture. Um, then you can proceed with the next page and get a well, multi-page document scanned this way. Very convenient. Next we have MapKit. That's a control to use in your Mac applications in 64-bit only, and you can show a map on, on screen, you can let the user navigate on this map, you can find locations, you can show routes, add your own annotations. It's using Apple Maps as a data source, so you can use it without paying any royalties to other mapping services. Yeah, well, <laughs> You can write it for, for iOS if you use declares. 
for military reasons and to weapons. Uh, not really. No. No. I mean, you could have your make um, hosting your web app, and then you could use the functions to take snapshots and show them on the. Uh, but but the live control is is uh, provided by Apple for the for the desktop. Well, you can ask for directions. You can show the snapshots of the map in the web app. Of course, you can. You can access 2D or 3D maps. You can show normal map view. You can show satellite view. And you can, of course, show roads on, on your satellite image. You can have 3D satellite images. You can uh, plan the routes and get directions. And that's very detailed. So you get all the individual steps of the routes. You get the distances, the coordinates. You get the little um, path to show the, the segment on the, on the map. You can show overlays and annotations, so you can put your, your customers as pins on the map. You can show overlays to, to color an area, like a city, or make a heat map. And here's a snapshot of the example project coming with a plugin. So we show here a map. And here is a snapshot of a 3D picture. So this is New York. Uh, if you if you need, you can take those snapshots and include them maybe in an email. I mean, you could invite your customers to come to your company and show them the route on the map and put the map in the email. So next we have ThinkIt. ThinkIt is um, a framework from Apple to show 3D scenes. It's for Mega 64 bit again, and it provides a control you can put on your layer, uh, on your window. Uh, you can show 3D graphics. Uh, it's using the Metal Engine internally. So if you need no placement for the OpenGL surface, you can use it. You can create primitives objects like cubes or cones and put them on the, on the view. You can add uh, textures, of course. And you can move the camera around either with a mouse or automatically. You can animate everything. And you can render pictures, of course, if needed. And here are a few pictures from our example projects. So if you need to show any 3D graphic, like a, again, like a shard, you could do that. And um, here is, um, oops. Maybe, oh ah, yeah, it's starting. So this is a little uh, simulation we made where you can navigate in 3D and see the animations from all the angels. So you all may have played this game before. Enter. <laughs> okay, next thing we have JSON functions. The MES plugin has a JSON class. We have a C library we use and it's built for performance. It's much faster than the built in Sojo JSON functions, as far as I know. And you can use it to pass JSON and to generate JSON. We recently got a new convert method, which allows you to convert between a Sojo representation, like using dictionaries, arrays, and variants, to the JSON object, and from the JSON object back to the dictionaries and arrays. We have improvements on 64-bit handling, so we avoid uh, having 64-bit numbers being rounded uh, by converting them to a double value, and back from the double to the in 64. And even if you have bigger numbers, if, if, um, if the JSON contains a bigger number, we are not uh, truncating it or rounding it for any reason. We, we keep the numbers as they are. We also got a function to compare two JSON objects with all the subnodes. So you can see if two JSON objects are the same 
a new content. And for arrays in JSON, we got functions to find the index of a value in array, which is very convenient because the plugin can loop over the over the nodes quicker than if you write a loop in Sodium. And we got a convenient function to convert JSON to HTML. You can convert your JSON to HTML, then load it in the HTML viewer, and the user can see the content of the HTML without having to know anything about JSON. Even as JSON is so simple, I mean, showing it as a table can be helpful. Then we got improvements for our SQL plugin. We added last year the kubesql client. So if you know kubesql, that's um, a SQLite-based database server, which can be used by small and bigger groups in a local network. It's a software from uh, Marco Bambini from Italy. It's a very nice database server, which is easy to install and has been uh, in use with Soldier for a decade, I think. We also got an internal kubesql client library, so you don't need to include any DLLs with your application and you can just connect to the kubesql server. This supports SSL and I think encryption as well. We got improvements for our 64-bit handling for the SQL plugin. It allows you again to not convert all the 64-bit numbers to double, but we keep them as 64-bit numbers, avoiding any truncation or roundings. Then I rewrote the caching. So you have the possibility to keep a record set local on your computer in the memory, move forward and backward as needed, and this caching got written um, to use much less memory and is even faster. But that's uh, useful with the um, bulk fetch function we have. So instead of fetching each row over the network one at a time, we can fetch, um, fetch them in, in groups of maybe a hundred rows, which makes the database access much faster. We can stream blob fields. So with the MBS plugin, you can assign a string to a blob field, but you can also assign a memory block, avoiding the conversion to string. You can also put in a folder item, so the plugin will on demand read the data from the folder item and pass it to the database. You can also stream a blob field back to a folder item, which can help if your blob field is really big and you want to reduce your memory footprint. Then we got insert record and update record methods, which take the values as dictionaries. The plugin will build the SQL command for this and perform it with prepared statements and uh, parameters internally. So this is just convenience for you to just add a record with a one line. For connections to the database, you can set various options and we got dictionary so you can inspect the options in the debugger. Very convenient, nice to see which options got set. And regularly, we update to the latest SQLite and SQL API library versions, so we keep up to date with any changes coming there. Then we have improvements to Shard Director. The current version is uh, 6.3. We um, improved our examples to better work on high DPI and the latest Soldier versions. We now return the pictures all with the proper resolution, so if you use scaling to get high DPI shards, um, you will enjoy that. Here are some example charts with high DPI, so you have a better resolution for screen. We can output them as PDF too, and use our Dyna PDF functions to place those PDFs on, on a PDF page. Needed, so you don't need to embed a big picture in the PDF document. This example is also uh, showing how to use our controls class there. So you can actually click on, on the parts of the pie and expand them, or you can move your mouse uh, over the 
dots on the graph and see the actual values. Next we have a class for text encoding conversions, text converter MBS. It's based on the ICANN VE library and it allows you to convert just one piece of text or a stream conversion. So if you're reading from one document and writing to another, you could on the fly transcode it. It supports over 100 text encodings and we mainly made this to get one customer happy with UTF-7. Yeah, we all know UTF-8, but there's also a 7-bit version. And if you need any of those exotic encodings not built into Soldier itself, this, this class may be helpful. What? Oh, sorry. Uh, I would have to look up the list if it's included. Next is, next is a library about USB. So we have a cross-platform library to access USB devices, but you need to know the protocol. Because we are just finding devices, connecting, sending data, receiving data, but you need to know the protocol the device wants. It works for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And as I said, you can find the devices, connect, and then send and receive data as needed. Yeah. We also got a Bluetooth plugin last year for Mac and Windows, supporting both classic Bluetooth as well as Bluetooth LE. And we have a few example projects to talk to various devices. And that's quite interesting for a few customers. Well, you find the device, you connect to it, and you send and receive data. For example, you could have a Bluetooth-enabled um, scale in your office, or you could have some temperature sensor, which sends the current temperature over Bluetooth A, and your application gets the live data. There's still no plugin SDK for iOS. I'm sorry. You can, of course, do something with declares. You could hire someone to write you the declares if you can't do it yourself. Some things can't be done with declares because you need uh, thread safety, which so it doesn't have. So I'm still hoping for plugin SDK. Yeah. Okay, SSH, another topic. We can um, connect on an SSH server, we can tell it to connect, um, uh, to create a TCP IP channel to a different server. So you can connect to your computer in a data center behind, through the firewall, and then within the data center can make a connection to another server. We also got the SSH tunnel. So you can programmatically create a tunnel in your application and then use something else like the MySQL classes to connect through the tunnel within your application to the target database. And that's a common use because usually the MySQL server is behind the firewall and not reachable from outside. At least for the data centers I've been working with. And we added IPv6 support um, because well, the world is going to IPv6. Then we got improvements for the curl library. We have our new setup open authentication function, which helps you to well, do the authentication for various web services. We have an example for Twitter, but other services also work very nice. And the function simply calculates all the required headers for you. You just pass in the values. It's very convenient. And we have a similar function for AWS. For, so for any AWS um, service from Amazon, you can use this function to set up a query. You pass in the parameters, we calculate the authentication token and send it with a request. We have an example for a S3 service to store and retrieve data files, but you can use it with any other ABS service, like EC2 to automatically shut down or start a virtual machine. It also works with other companies using the same interface, like Dell. They have also services using the same authentication scheme. 
And in China, there's also Baidu doing the same. So some people are very happy with it. Then we got the file info class, which helps you getting um, file listings from your FTP server in a structured way. We have uh, the URL class, which helps you to pass an URL or to create a URL. The curl library used to have something like 50 different uh, URL parsers all over the project and they unify them to one central place. And we can use the same API ourselves to well, build URLs. For handling uh, meme no, or MIME parts in uh, for sending form data, we got new functions. You can um, add data to your form data and send it to the server, to a PHP, PHP script, for example, and process it. <coughs> we also got a class to expect what you have in your forms. We got a SSL backend class, so you can query which SSL backend is in use for the current curl library. And as you may know, we are providing a, a curl library with open OpenSSL and SSH library, but you can also use um, native libraries on Mac and Windows instead, if you prefer. Or you can even load your own copy of the kernel library yourself. By default, we follow redirects now. This avoids a couple of support requests with people not getting what they want. You can still turn it off. And we now enable gzip uh, decoding by default, so you don't get uh, compressed data when you're not expecting it. We got an archive class, so you can read and write archives. This includes zip, tar, 7-zip, CPIO, and other formats. So if you need to compress or uncompress data files, this may be handy. We have an example to compress a folder with files. And we have, of course, an example to expand an archive into a folder. So if you have any need for that, right. And this replaces the older zip file classes. And the new classes support metadata, including file permissions. So it's a much better engine than the one we used to have. On the topic of encryption, we got new SMEMA functions, so you can create encrypted emails if you want, or send encrypted uh, post messages to the web server. We also got classes for the Crypto Token Kit, which is Apple's current implementation for talking to smart cards and card readers, of course. So we're still keeping the smart card MBS class for Mac, Windows, and Linux to have a cross-platform interface. But if you're developing a new application for Mac, uh, I think Apple would prefer if you use a new framework. And here are the picture of two devices as an example. We have used these APIs uh, already on, on Belgium identity cards, as well as on Swiss health cards. But I would expect that any other smart card will also work if they use the same protocols and you have the IDs and the data formats available. Then we got functions to mount disks. You can mount and unmount a network volume on your computer. This can be useful to make a backup at midnight, copy some files, unmount the disk. You can also query the mount path for any mounted disks. And for Mac, we got even an extra class for mounting network disk asynchronously. So your user interface is not blocking. You can also use mount MBS and unmount MBS on a thread. And we uh, are doing the extra work on a background thread, so your application doesn't get blocked if you want. We have media library functions, so you can connect the media libraries on macOS. For example, you can get the music from iTunes, you can list the images from Photos application, or get the movies from iMovie. It's just a convenient way to offer your user an interface or even a, um, a 
floating pellet to pick some items from the library and use them in your application. Then we got a memory storage class, which allows you to store data outside your app's main memory on the computer. And this is great for 32-bit application. If you still need one on well, all the windows, for example, you can store a lot of data outside your address space, and this helps you to keep your memory footprint for your main application smaller. Then we have uh, enhancements to graphics magic functions. We got a GM convert class, which allows you to convert images from one format to another. And this runs threaded on a helper thread. So it doesn't block your user interface. And you can use several CPUs to convert several images in parallel. You can apply effects, rotation, format changes, like if you want to have black and white images or convert from one color space to another, you can do that in the background. We also got GM image methods. For example, auto-orient makes sure that the metadata from the picture is, is used to see if the picture is maybe rotated and then rotated to be straight uh, with top left on top left. <laughs> and with extent, you can now add extra space on your image and, for example, write some text there. And now we are coming to DynaPDF. So we got in DynaPDF a rasterizer class, and this one got updated to use Direct Draw on Windows. You can render with the alpha channel, and here I have an example. This is a PDF page with transparent background. We rendered it as a PNG file with alpha channel. And now we can show it here on the slide where you can see through the background. Okay. Then there's Dyna PDF 5 coming later this year, and it will have full Unicode support. So all the necessary steps for Unicode are done to prepare text before writing it. We can do font out substitution, so if you pick a font and the font doesn't have the glyph you need, we can automatically take it from a backup font. Then we will support Sukhver 2 version 2. This is a standard for invoices being uh, delivered as a PDF with embedded XML metadata. You can already use Sukhver uh, 1 standard and this is uh, the standard we use in, in Germany. There's similar standard for, for France and probably the US also has something for well, doing dig digital invoices. And if you add a signature to a PDF document, you may also want to have a function to verify and that's also coming so you can check if the PDF is signed properly. Here's an example text we rendered with the new functions. So we have here text in German, English, but also in Bengali and Hindi and Korean. And all those characters you have in your text need some pre-processing there. Because depending on um, which character is coming after or before the character currently being drawn, you have to actually pick one of several glyphs to represent it on the screen. And this pre-processing is now done in Dyna PDF, and you no longer need an extra library to do this. It's a lot of work, so well, we hope this will come later this year. And, but this is already working, because this is a live document we created with the new Dyna PDF version in development. Then we have functions for image files. We do have uh, EXIF support for our PNG classes. So you can get the EXIF metadata block from a PNG file and embed it in another PNG file. This is useful if you want to convert from, for example, from JPEG to PNG and pass on the, the EXIF data. Our TIFF classes can return scaled scan lines. That's very useful if you want to get a preview picture of your TIFF files. Your TIFF file can be very big, several gigabytes. And you may only want to get um, every second pixel or whatever to reduce the data. 
Then we got a uh, progressive mode support for our GPEG importer, so you can show pictures while they're loading if they're really big. Then we have new functions for files. There's the read file and the write file function, and they are avoiding the old APIs on MacOS, so we can read and write files very quick. I've upgraded an application from using binary stream to using those functions, and it went down for no an hour to five minutes. It's amazing. If your application writes something like 10,000 files in, in, in a batch process, this can really make a difference. Especially if your disk is APFS formatted. Does it come back to the old APIs or the uh, Actually, we only support MacOS 10.9 and newer, so we can use those newer functions from 10.8 or something. For Windows, it's still uh, using, uh, it still works, yeah. It's it's falling back to the normal uh, C, read and write functions. So, but the main reason for this was to get speed on APFS. Because those older uh, carbon APIs are no longer maintained by Apple very well. Yeah, and will probably be removed soon. <laughs> Then we have improvements on MacOS itself. So our NS Color class got uh, upgrades for dark mode colors. You can get uh, gestures on a canvas control with our canvas gesture class. So you can see if someone is swiping or zooming with the fingers. Then we have the Wi-Fi client class, which allows you to see what's the current Wi-Fi network, switch between networks and uh, get a notification if the network is switched by the user. Then our file list class, which is very helpful to list files, well, files in a directory on Mac, Windows and Linux, got rewritten for, for the Mac side to use fast, faster APIs, again to get speed on APFS. And our um, and we have the UN notification classes now for macOS too. Apple uh, introduced those in iOS first and then ported them to Mac for Mojave. And we have now the older user notification classes and the newer UN notification classes available. And for AppleScript, we got the determinate permissions to automate target function. So you can query whether your application is allowed to send an Apple script, or you can ask the user for permissions, and then a little dialog will show up, and the user can confirm that you are allowed to automate. This may require that you have an entry in your info.plist in the application to declare that you are using Apple script. Then we have improvements for StoreKit. StoreKit is Apple's framework um, to offer in-app purchases for the Mac App Store. Some of you may use the Mac App Store already, and you can use our StoreKit uh, classes to list the products available and start a transaction. You can now request a review, so a little dialog pops up and the user is asked whether they like, like your application, and so you can uh, give it five stars. You can query where the receipt is, we have classes to pass the receipt file and read all the data inside, like um, which subscriptions you have and when they expire. And you can now offer downloadable content, so your application can download additional files via the App Store when, well, when the user paid for it. Here's a screenshot of our purchase dialog. Well, it's in German and in the sandbox, but you get the localized screen for whatever you buy. And here's our test application showing the test product. Then we have functions for the web viewer. The MAS plugin provides the VK web view control. That's our implementation of the WebKit 2 framework from Apple to give you a control to use the latest WebKit engine on, on MacOS projects. There's a fallback for 32-bit to use the WebKit 1 version in that case, and we try to provide the same functionality for both. But, uh, Sojo is still using the WebKit 1 version for the HTML viewer, so if you want to get some 
JavaScript features. On macOS, you have to use our control to get the newer engine. And for our control, we got events for progress change, so you can track the loading of a website, as well as title change, where you can uh, well, get the title. For the classes around uh, WebKit 1, our Web UI Delegate gives you a context menu entry, so you can customize the context menu showing to the user or disable it. And we got more methods to print HTML viewer to uh, a printer or to a PDF file, where you can pass on um, the settings for the print info. So, well, you can decide whether you want landscape or what paper, or what printer, whatever. And we got a class to control the caching, so you can um, decide whether documents should be cached or when the cache should be cleared, or whatever. Then there's AV Foundation, that's the framework from Apple for recording, playing, editing videos. So we got new functions for AV Capture device to ask the user for permissions to access the camera and the microphone. We have codecs added, like uh, here the high HEVC, the new codec preferred by Apple. We also have uh, live support. Um, we have support for live detection of barcodes, faces, and text in the, in the video feed. So we can use the CA a core image detector object to process video frames as they are coming in and give you an event if we detect anything. We got the AV capture view control and the AV player view control. Those are the standard controls from Apple for recording or playback, and you can just add them to your to your window and get the standard controls from Apple to well, playback or record. And for exporting videos to a different format, we got an uh, export MT method. So you can either decide to export asynchronously, you can export synchronously, and now you can even export synchronously in a background thread to not block the user interface. And we got classes for the find bar. This is a feature of macOS for your um, text areas or <coughs> text views. You can show the find bar, you can allow users to search and replace within your text area, and that's a very nice feature, very convenient, and maybe worth to just enable it for your users. Then we have improvements for Windows. The frontmost property works now for Windows, so you can just assign to and all your windows come to the front, even if they are behind other windows. There's also the activate window function um, to bring one window to the front. We have a function to query the hard links for a given file on disk, so if a file has well, several hard links, you get the list of them. Our class for serial ports on Windows got a new function to query the list of COM devices, also useful if you want to know which serial ports exist on a computer. And our function to draw rotated text got an upgrade for Windows to use IDPI uh, text. Looks better. Maybe. And then we have more Windows improvements. We got a display class, so you can list which displays are connected, what physical size I have, and then even see which DPI setting is in use for the devices. This is good if you want to scale images on screen to have the same size as the physical well, picture. We have the file info class to give you more details about files, including all the dates, like access date, modification date, creation date. We have a function to clear the browser session for the HTML viewer, so you can um, reset the cache or clear the cookies. We got a class to monitor the usage of, of resources, so you can monitor your application, whether it's leaking uh, handles, because if there are no more handles available on Windows, your application stops drawing.
We also got um, properties to enable spell checking on Windows as well as auto correction. So for all the text areas you have, you can just enable it with the plugin. Requires Windows 8. Then we got um, a function for the text area to show the standard Windows font dialog. You can pick a font and then continue typing with that font. Maybe worse for your well, text areas to have a button to show the font dialog and user can just pick something. Then we have improvements to our direct show classes, which we use for recording video on Windows. We got functions to get higher resolution on the camera, not just the default resolution, but enable the highest resolution capable by the camera. We got compression settings. We have a class for that, so you can by encode set the compression settings, but we also got property dialogues uh, for those settings. And here are four different dialogues, so you can set up the controls for the camera, for the format to record, for the stream format of the video stream and the audio stream, and the properties for the audio mixer. Like if you have several um, microphones in your session, you could define with the mixer how they're mixed. Then we got improvements for Linux. We are still building all our plugins for 32-bit, 64-bit Linux and for the ARM target. We now include function names on Linux, so your crash reports will show the MBS functions. Well, if it crashes, of course. <laughs> but really, getting a crash report without a function name can't do anything. You can just say, well, it's somewhere in the code. We also got a class for handling of icons on Linux, a model, sorry. So you can get uh, the standard picture for file types as well as the pictures, uh, the preview pictures of the content of the file. There are a few changes we made to the plugins. Over the last year, we removed all the Magos Carbon only functionality. So a lot of classes are removed, which you no longer need because while you are writing Cocoa applications in Sojo, this includes all the quick draw stuff. And we still build Real Studio plugins actually because I still have a few customers on, on some Real Studio versions, but uh, we are just giving them out on demand for those who need them. And 99% of our users are on Sojo. And the latest version usually. Our socket classes over the or various socket classes all got IPv6 support and our LDAP classes got fixed to have proper timeout. And now there's something new. Um, on the way here in the, airport, in the airplane, I decided to fulfill a wish from a customer to make my own shell class. So it's, it's a replacement for the built-in shell and we are trying to uh, make it similar to the existing class, but also add a few features people may have needed and not don't find them in the built-in shell class. So currently it's for Mac, Windows and Linux. It provides you a way to read standard error and standard out of your uh, application you're running. You can send in data to standard N. You can kill the application and, uh, sorry, you can uh, kill the application and uh, get the exit code if needed. So, and then there's one more thing. There's something we have wanted for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, just a month ago I had, an, finally I had an idea how I could do it. So, and the one thing is graphics for DynaPDF. So, we integrate with the graphics class. You may have all your code to draw something, to uh, draw something on the graphics object for a picture or for printing or for, for a canvas. And now you can also use a graphics object to use the same drawing code to go in a PDF document. So there's a new page graphics property which gives you the graphics object for the 
current page in Dyna PDF. We actually internally create a temporary picture and you get the graphic object from it. You can even inspect this temporary picture to see if all your drawing to the PDF is looking as, as the same as the drawing to this picture. And all the drawing commands on this graphics object are going both to the picture and to the PDF. Yeah. And we support all the normal drawing commands. You can draw ovals, rects, round rects, lines, polygons, you can fill them. This works with transparency if you want, with various colors. We can draw text, of course. We can get the height of the text because the height in the PDF world is usually different than the one in the graphics property normally because fonts may not be 100% the same for the PDF. We also got string width so you can get the width of a text and you can draw pictures in your PDF pages of course. You can mix that with your normal PDF commands we have. So Maybe you want to draw something with, with the graphics class and then draw something with the native PDF functions. And you can even switch to the next page, which allows you to either let the plugin just do the default action by just closing the current page, starting a new page, or you can even get an event and then import an existing PDF as a background of the next page. Here's an example output of some graphics I made in PDF. It looks exactly the same as on the picture as here on the PDF. Any question? Uh, yeah, there are a couple of commands like drawing a alert icon, which I didn't, see, didn't like to avoid. We support vector graphics classes. That was really a lot of work, more than the other stuff. <laughs> Get all those classes supported. So here are two pictures. The left one is a PDF, the right one is a, um, is a picture. You see here a round rects, you see a rectangle with transparency, you see an oval, you see a rotated oval. You see uh, arcs, you see a polygon, a filled polygon for the ice cream cone. You see rotated text. And once we made the vector graphics classes, we also got the report engine to work with it. So you may have seen those uh, reports in, in Sojo, in the examples folder, and you can now output them all to PDF with the plugin. This works with all soldier versions, even the, the very old one and real to be. All Dyna PDF editions we have, starter version is enough to just create a page and draw something on it. And it's coming for the next version of the MBS plugins. And I will probably uh, get a better out soon and you can all try it and report any bugs you find. And now I have a little recommendation. There's another event in October in Cologne, Germany. It's a social conference like this one. Just it's in Europe and I'm, the organi I'm organizing it. You don't need to use MBS plugins to come. <laughs> it's for everyone. And if you use a coupon code XT XTC 2019, you can get 20% discount on the licenses for all the plugins, as well as 20% on the conference ticket for the upcoming conference. Uh, do that in May, please. And now, do you have any questions? Yes, please. Um, can you know a lot of XML for the project and XML for But I use XFL information the ideal situation for me would be able to still use native XML documentation, uh, documentation. 
Yeah, well, okay, the question is about XLSD 2, version 2, or probably 3. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, the XML classes in Soldier are based on libxml, as far as I know. There's also libxlst, an open source library doing the xlst part, which supports only version 1. I've looked myself into this uh, the last months because several people asked that. But as far as I see, all the libraries supporting version 2 or 3 are either commercial and very expensive, or they are for Java and GPL. While you could use the Java stuff with a command line tool, I've not yet found a sponsor to buy me the <laughs> commercial license for one of those C++ libraries. Or it would be that there would be a plugin and you would have to buy yourself the license, whatever. But that's not cheap as far as I know. Any other questions? Well, technically, there is none. Oh, yeah, the question. What's, what's better in the MBS shell than in the normal shell? Well, the difference is I can fix it. <laughs> so the idea is there are some customers who need additional functions. Like we have split the standard error and standard out. So we have two channels where you can read the data. That's something the normal shell doesn't do. I'm not sure if the normal shell has a kill command. I don't know. Uh, we may add more functions, especially for Windows. I have some additions there that you can specify the username and password of the account to actually run the application. And uh, there's even the request to be able to launch something from a service on Windows, which may be tricky, but should be possible. And that may be a feature which never goes into the official shell class, but I can add it maybe. So there are a lot of classes in the MES plugin doing the same as in the normal soldier framework. But I say, the difference is that I can add features to my classes easily, which may not come to the official framework. In our case. <laughs> uh, any other question? What's the difference between the spellcheck you have working versus what? Well, both just enable the feature from the operation system. So I'm not sure. My functions can, of course, be used by older versions of Sojo if you need those. And I'm not sure. They have spell checking. Do they also have auto correction? Yeah, the auto correction is actually why you type it, it fixes bugs automatically. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of duplicate functionality. But as I said, uh, for the stuff in the plugin, I can just change it if there is a, a little issue or if, if just one client needs a change, it may be worse for me to do the change. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Then thank you all for coming and see you in Cologne. <laughs>